Hi, everyone. Today in Compassion in Action, we're talking with William Radinson. Uh, everyone in Compassion in Action today, William's an educator. He is a Catholic. He's a member of the advisory board to Christ the King School in the Bronx, New York. He's been a vegan for more than 34 years, and he's a longtime supporter of many animal protection organizations, such as the Animal Legal Defense Fund, Farm Sanctuary, the American Vivisection Society, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Uh, William, I'm going to welcome you. Uh, for, thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank you. We're thrilled. Uh, William does some very important work. He educates children about ethical choices in eating and uh, general, you know, humane treatment of animals. Um, one question several of us are curious about, William, those of us that are not Catholic um, have no familiarity with uh, the dogmas and tenets and how that works in a, in a Catholic education situation. How did you introduce this sometimes controversial topic into your teaching curriculum? Okay, so <clears throat> let me um, just make sure that I characterize this as, as best as I can. Um, this all started in about the fall of 2019. I, was, I had been on the advisory board since 2017. And in a conversation with the principal, Stephen Ayuso, uh, he told me that there was a teacher that was really interested in teaching about kindness to animals. And I said, well, I, you know, I'm involved with a lot of animal rights organizations, protection organizations. I, I support them and I can get you some material. So I proceeded to get some material from Teach Kind, from PETA's Teach Kind uh, program. And the teacher started teaching about compassion to animals uh, in a religion class. And so that gave me the idea. I said, well, you know, that's not too far. I can probably do something here. So I started developing a prototype. Basically, I took each grade from kindergarten to eight and picked a month during the year and essentially try to match the religion pacing guide of the New York City Archdiocese, which is based on Sadler, and with basically things that I was aware of, of humane education, I haven't been involved with animal rights organizations, animal, animal protection organizations, and started to marry them and say, you know, the Catholic social teaching, which I was a little bit familiar with, actually allows me the room to do this. So that's how I started. That's how the initial prototype guide started. And then once I got that, I actually flagged that by, um, I, I had a principal, a uh, woman named Kathy Hofnagel, who used to work for the archdiocese and I guess on the development side. And she reviewed it and she said, you know, this has really a lot of potential. Why don't you think about developing the guide fully? I said, okay. So then I developed the guide for every grade from K through eight every month of the school year, again, using Sadler and using the religion pacing guide of the New York City Archdiocese. And that's how the guide came to be. And essentially then my other readings with the Catholic social teaching, I was trying to make the guide sort of accessible to teachers that they could use it in the New York City Archdiocese. And that's how the whole thing sort of began. What I can't tell you, and I don't want to in any way, I guess, uh, uh, what I call it, misstate is that I'm still in this, I'm still trying to get teachers to use it at the New York City Archdiocese. Um, mm. the, the, the head of religion curriculum in the Archdiocese has actually allowed, has actually told me that, that she, she wrote to me in an, e in an email that this guide can be used as optional curriculum. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually sending emails to each of the principals of the New York City Archdiocese, the schools K through eight. I started out just recently and essentially introducing the whole idea of the guide and see if they will use it. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I just want to make sure I characterize that correctly for your for all of the people that are on this on this beautiful service. Well, I love, love, love that you're pushing that work forward. It, it is it is some of the most important work I think we can do to help animals is to teach children a different viewpoint. Um, I can't imagine how it would have affected my life if I had received that message in school when I was young. I, it's tremendous what you're doing. Can you uh, talk a little bit about the Care for God's Creation, which is from the Catholic uh, Social Teaching Scripture Guide? Right. Well, that's I got introduced to that about I would say close to 10 years ago, because my journey in the Catholic Church began, uh, my wife is a lifelong Catholic, 
and she sort of got me into to get to the church in about 1963. There, I'm, I'm sorry, when I was 63, I tend to confuse these things, uh, which is about 10 years ago, roughly. And then as I started taking courses at St. Francis of Assisi Adult Education, one of the courses was on care for creation. I'm sorry, Catholic social teaching. And in there, there's about the rights and responsibilities of the poor. And there is a whole section on care for creation. And that was my first introduction into that, into finding out that my interest about protecting animals and caring for animals was not incompatible with the Catholic social teaching. And that I also found out that there are many saints that of course have made it their life being, you know, caring for animals, not just Francis of Assisi, which is one that everybody tends to know about. And so in fact, the guide is full of references to saints and others who have been, who put it, put their sort of made, made it their made it their life's uh, mission to care about animals. And so that's why I I I sort of that's how I, I was able to 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 look at the guide and see this is not in any way I'm not in any way doing anything that's not compatible with the basic teachings of the Catholic Church. I love hearing that, and I I didn't know that. I think it it it's uh, something that a lot more people need to hear about. We just don't hear about that side of Catholicism at all. You've also mentioned that you're working on a book, an animal compassion prayer book. Okay. nourishment for activists can you tell us a bit about that well that i'm starting that so here's here's the um the idea behind that every every day twice a day i pray the san francis prayer book and mm -hmm. so if you're familiar with the prayer book the prayer book gives you an opportunity to sort of get into a space where admittedly you're not in the times of san francis but you're in a space where you're with the lord and you're commuting with the lord you're trying to understand you know, how can you live a life that is truly, I guess, one that is in keeping with, with, with you know, not no harm to anyone and, 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 and basically trying to look and see the love of everyone that you see around you. And so I said, you know, it would be interesting to have a, a, a prayer book like this for people who are animal activists and animal compassion activists who perhaps, regardless of their faith tradition, admittedly, I'm coming from it from a Catholic tradition. I get that. But could I do, could I develop something like that? And so I started working on that several months ago and trying to follow that San Francis prayer bike where I have a morning prayer, an evening prayer. I have um, uh, references to La Dato Si, uh, references to the latest La Dato Deo. Um, also have certain Catholic poetry because I have a book that goes back to the ninth, to, I guess uh, the turn of the century, this book on Catholic poetry. And I was able to find poems that re reference about care for animals from different Catholic authors that I wanted to include in the in the in, in the guide, just to give people a little bit of a how would I call it, just inspiration, if you will. And then I looked at the Bible, and specifically, I was, um, I guess, must be the Holy Spirit that uh, sort of motivated me to look at the letters from St. Paul, because the letters of St. Paul are to new communities. And so the way I'm looking at it is that animal activists, let's face it, we're new communities. We're not, you know, we're 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 just trying to to basically pass the gospel on to other people, and so that's kind of how I I started getting into into developing the guide in such a way. I mean, I should say the prayer book, so that I could reflect that, and that somebody can be inspired by perhaps again my variation and my adaptation of the letter of Saint Paul to the Thessalonians. But it's 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 trying to get animal activists to kind of look at it. You know, my my life is is there's a transcending thing to my life and this is part of it. And so that's, that, that's the idea behind the prayer book. I'm still editing it. My wife is a really, she's a really good editor. So she's the one who's looking at it right now to make sure that it's ready for prime time. <laughs> it's not yet. Well, let us know. We're looking forward to seeing it when you publish it and it's much needed. Activists need all the comfort they can get. One quick question before we end. What is the one thing each of us can do today after we leave here to make the world a, a more compassionate place? That's a tall order. That's a tall order. I, when I thought about your question initially, I, you know, I, I think it's all about the children. I, I, I think we have to work with them. They're, they're the, they're, to me, they're the, they're the few, they're the only ones that can save us from. Let's face it, we're on a path to climate catastrophe. The way we're, the way, you know, the way it's going in this world, and it seems to me that anything we could do to, to, to 
to get those fruits of the children, to be able to anything that we could do. That's why I'm on this UFT Human Education Committee. And what I'm trying to do there is trying to get teachers there to help to get them to get trained in human education, because believe it or not, that's human education, as you all know, can be taught in science, technical, science, technology, engineering, mathematics curriculum. So it's it's not an easy thing to teach. But meanwhile, you got to get people trained. So I'm looking for any and all opportunities, frankly, to help the children, because I worry about them. I my, 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 my best friends just recently had a, his daughter was born August 25th. Her name is Anne. And I, and I thought, I said, what world are we leaving for Anne? I mean, for God's sake, what are we doing? What can we do better for Anne? Yeah. So that to me is, you know, that that's why I, I'm, it's all about children. That's why I will continue to do this work and see what I can do to but put my little grain, grain of sand, if you will, as we say in Spanish, granito de arena, you know, uh, <laughs> put it in there to see if what we can do and help. Well, bless you, William, and bless your work because it is a blessing on this world. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. God thank bless you all. It's a pleasure just seeing all of you, seeing your wonderful faces and seeing all the program that you shared on this on this service. It's, it's great. Thank you. Thank you, William.